Good evening, church. Ah, it's good to be here. Those of you in the viewing audience, we're uh, going to discuss a contemporary subject, and that of transgenderism, and of course what the Bible has to say, as well as science. So we're going to discuss some of these things. And again, we're not trying to uh, be argumentative with people. We're not uh, trying to be elitist and the like. But some things are just not scientific. And when it comes to mental disorders, we're going, also going to make mention that you just can't fix crazy. And as we talk about these matters, and especially the Lord's Church and the Bible, the Bible gives us a different picture. And we're going to discuss some of the rationale, some of the sources of those who are trying to change the family. Because when we talk about transgenderism, it is an attack against sex, meaning male and female. It is an attack against genderism, or being uh, one of two genders, and the family at large. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on today. You know, it's strange. We think of these kinds of things that there are some disgruntled folks usually out in California, they usually get a bad rap, that they have an idea, and since they pay taxes, that their idea should be equal with everyone else's. But that's not really where it's emanating from. It might be implemented, it might be argued for, but there is what's called the CSE, or the Comprehensive Sex Education. Now, within that, not only does it deal with human sexuality, but it also deals with political, uh, as we would say, arguments or events when it comes to transgender and homosexuality. As a matter of fact, where did it come from? Is it from the Department of Education? Well, lo and behold, uh, we're very familiar with Planned Parenthood. Uh, they have an acronym the IPPF, or the International Planned Parenthood Federation. The UN, they write policy for the United <laughs> Nations. And, they, and you, can all, you can look at this online. These are things that are easily corroborated and can be verified. So throughout the world, about 170 or so nations that, in all the various languages, there is a curriculum developed by Planned Parenthood. Now, isn't that strange? Now, they make argument that no child should be unwanted. However, they're going to bring propaganda throughout the world. So young boys, young girls, and they have a bill of rights, so to speak, and they sexualize children, and they begin at around age four. And this is going throughout our curriculum, like no student left behind, and the like, common core, all of these things that sound good, but are actually is an opening for this kind of propaganda to your children, to mine, to your grandchildren, to mine. So it's a very serious subject, and again, those of you in the viewing audience, we are going to look at some accurate things. And, as we may mention, and if we're members of the church, uh, we're going to want to send out the word. So we, we just want to introduce some thoughts, and likewise, what the Bible has to say as well as science. So please, uh, look at the evidence and make your conclusion. But this is where it's emanating from. So you can imagine a world where young boys and young girls are sexualized and you have children that are very young, girls becoming with child. So all of these services promoted by Planned Parenthood and now more services are needed, and with the inception of this transgenderism, we all know what this is, right, church? 
It started out probably a year or so ago with Mr. Bruce Jenner. And I'm going to say Mr. Bruce Jenner. You know, as we talk about science, when it comes to chromosomes, you know, it, it's strange, isn't it? That little Y chromosome has a whole lot to do with the person, whether they're male or female, they're a man or woman. And a dress is not going to change that fact. It is a mental disorder. And we need to discuss that. And again, we might be a little glib with some of our, I, or my, I'll speak for myself, how I speak plainly. But we care for the souls of these people, but their lifestyle, oh my, it's laughable. It's insanity. So as we look at this, where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from the United Nations. It's coming from the inner, from Planned Parenthood. And now with transgenderism, there are more services that, that are going to be needed. Talk about perpetuating a business. This is at its core. And when children are not sure and they're very impressionable, this kind of foolishness can be taught. And it can have influence on children. Let's look at the Bible and, and, and let's notice a few things together, church. And not a great deal. <clears throat> Pardon me. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, God made them male and female. Made them. Male and female. Them. Plurality. And we'll find that there was no third type of gender, no third type of sex. In the next verse, chapter 1 and verse 28, God created men and women, and it doesn't say it per se or specifically, but we get the, the total teaching of the scripture that men and women are designed to cohabitate together in holy matrimony and to have children and to subdue the earth. So yes, we get a picture from the Bible that God made them men and women, or male and female, and that they should live together in matrimony. Also, in the book of Genesis, chapter 5, verses 1 through 2, when we talk about Adam, when we talk about generations, have we pondered that those that claim to be transgender, which really are very confused, that will not have generations. And when we think about this, culture uh, as we know it, where we have a language, where we have stability and the like, will not exist. So it's a, an extremely important discussion, and likewise, as we see from the Bible, and this is not the only teaching of the Bible, church, and those of you in the viewing audience, we've, we've discussed marriage, we've discussed children and the like. But we have to look at some highlights as well. When we talk about Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, how God made them male and female, in the book of Proverbs chapter 23, verses 22 to 25, it deals with the family dynamic, where you have a mother, you have a father, and the importance of child rearing, and correct child rearing. By whom? By the state? By caseworkers? No. By teachers? No. But by mothers and fathers. Well, we looked at the Bible, and some would say, yeah, preacher, you, you know, we expect that from you. You're going to talk about the Bible, and you're going to uh, basically hang your hat, so to speak, from that peg. Uh, actually, no. Science has a great deal of information that corroborates actually what the Bible has to say. DNA. Now, we all know what, uh, when a person, uh, for instance, with our driver's licenses, in the event of our death, many of us are organ donors. Things like hearts, things like kidneys and the like. And that's a good thing. You know, we're not going to need them in the grave, are we? And as we ponder such matters, do we realize when it comes to 
DNA, when it comes to simple things like chromosomes and the like, that the heart is different in a man than it is in a woman and vice versa. Isn't that something? God created them male and female. There are some organs that both genders can, of course, accept and not reject. It gets to be somewhat complicated, but nonetheless, what, what has been some of the great finds in the last, well, it's not even a generation ago, in the 80s and 90s, about DNA? Well, we know that a heart in a man is different from that in a woman. We also know some other things. In psychology, it has been studied when we speak about the family dynamic and the importance of role. We understand that there are boys or boyhood and what, what occurs. It's so instrumental in development. Hormones like testosterone in, in males and in, in boys lends up to manhood. And the same thing with women or girls and girlhood going off in or going into womanhood. Things like estrogen, the importance of it. That actually how we think, the, the, our, the structure of our, our, of our minds, that we're different, both male and female. Now I know some of you sisters here saying, yeah, you got that right, brother. He doesn't think right. But we all think differently. And it shows that we are designed by God. Now, we say some of these because what is transgenderism? People believe in their own minds and hearts. Going back to the CSC, this comprehensive sex education, divides, developed, economized, and the like, that a person, when we talk about sex, now I'm talking about male and female, that gender is somewhat uh, a little more than a generation ago. That has the idea of identity. And there are people that believe that they are women trapped in a man's body, like Mr. Jenner, and like some others that are women that are trapped in a man's body. Now, not long ago, and of course, under our Congress and a former president, that this concept and idea of having transgendered, uh, having a transgendered military, where men and women could come in and they could change, quote unquote, their gender. There's a lot of women that want to join, for instance, the Army Special Forces the Army Airborne Rangers and the like, the Navy SEALs, uh, the Marine Marsaw. Well, they can't do that as a woman. So what they want to do is they want to come into the military and they want to have a transgendered, trans, right? Kind of like a transfer of being a woman into a man. And, and, and you just can't do that. That's a mental disorder. You know, I always say this, and again, you, you can't pick up crazy and be armed with the truth. This is craziness. This is insanity. We uh, have been born either as a man or a woman. And that's all right. There's not an advantage of being a woman, and there's not an advantage of being a man. But there are things that women can do that men cannot do. For instance, the importance of childbearing. How can you have a society? How can you have a civilization if we don't have replacements? What gender is able to bear, able to birth, able to, as, as we think about uh, the importance of the role of mothers to, to mother, right? to help, and the like. Well, we, we can't go from male to female. And likewise, we can't go from female to male. 
And that's not a problem with our bodies. It's a problem with the mind, with some folks. Now, some would say, and I guess you could, uh, I'm not a psychologist, uh, some would say, well, some folks have their too many screws loose in their head. Yeah, but I, I don't think a, uh, a screw or two loose in the head is, is actually, or tightening that is needed. A matter of fact, a whole wheelbarrow full of screws or bolts uh, isn't going to fix that problem, so to speak. What we need to do is we need to go back to what science is. And there are those that make the claim that uh, when it comes to mankind, that we evolve from monkeys or tadpoles and the like, and they try to use science against what the Bible has to say, and we invite that, that discussion. But yet it's strange. These same people turn around when it comes to transgenderism, and what do they do with science? They don't even consult it. Our DNA, we're either male or female, the organs in our body, kidneys, hearts, lungs, and the like. They come with chromosomes, and they're genetically stamped, either male or female. To deny that is foolishness. It's insanity. And this is a reason why we cannot have discussion with people like that, because, again, you can't fix crazy. The evidence points towards the fact, from the Bible, from science, that we have men, we have women. We have boys, we have girls, and that the science is there's no third way. There's no third gender. There's no third chromosome or combination thereof. And yes, sometimes we have birth defects where we're not sure if it's born a boy or a girl, but now we can tell, depending upon that Y chromosome. And it doesn't change. And when we think about this dynamic and other kinds of things, like unto it, manhood, womanhood, these are two separate things, necessary, important, to have a vibrant civilization. And as we ponder such matters, children are important. You know, as we think of it, they have this propaganda and pointed towards children as early as four years old. You know, there are reasons why, when we speak about obedience to the gospel, this foolishness, this matter of baptizing little children and the like, they're, they're actually giving, a, a, as a, uh, uh, an observation, as a type and anti-type, as a comparison, they're actually giving hormonal treatment they're sterilizing children because they say at age 9, age 10, little boys think they're girls and little girls think they're boys. It sterilizes them. It causes them to have problems in the future of stroke, heart attack, cancers, and the like. Now how can a, a 6-year-old, 7, 8, 9-year-old make such a permanent decision? We don't really understand or we mature as men and women, really not until we get into our early 20s and make those kinds of decisions. Now, we've got propagandists, and we have people that want to destroy the family and the auspices of the United Nations. They have a Marxist, Leninist, socialistic worldview. And how do you perpetuate that worldview? You destroy the family. And how do you destroy that family? You destroy gender. And parents don't have a right to rear, to educate their children. No, that's left to caseworkers and teachers and bureaucrats. And this is where we're headed. So yes, it's a simple question, simple, simple study when it comes to gender. There's no such thing as transgender. It's foolishness. It's crazy. Oh, dare I say, it's stupid. But yet, we don't have the kind of backbone that's needed in many places and states of our country where superintendents of education will stand up, throw this foolishness out, 
And we need to go back to our roots. And our roots start with God, cooperated by science. Male and female, it's exactly what has been found in the human genome. And no one, no one debates that. And as we ponder such matters, we should have empathy for people who are mentally uh, ill, who think that even though they were born a man, they think that they're a woman, or born a, a woman think that they're a man. We should have care and concern for their soul. But their action, their propaganda, oh no. No, 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 no. We need to fight it tooth and nail. And one reason that we can do that, or one venue that we can do that, is to get out the word, to discuss these kinds of things. Well, I appreciate very much your kind attention. Uh, those of you in the viewing audience, uh, we are not trying to be controversial. However, when we talk about the basic building block of society, uh, as God would have it, we have to look into the scripture, and we have to determine if these things be so. We hope that you take time to study, uh, contact us, uh, soundinthefaith at gmail.com. Uh, uh, we look forward to your comments. Thank you.